Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Amy, if you're new here, I am an Irish ecologist living in Ireland and I also own quite a few houseplants. On my channel on YouTube, I make videos all about houseplants, how to care for them, how I manage my plant collection, as well as some personal content like vlogs and other lifestyle stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like, and if you are interested in seeing more videos from me, you can even hit subscribe, that would really help me out. So today we are doing a houseplant tour. This video is so long overdue. It was actually the first video I put on my channel it was a houseplant tour around a year ago now and yeah it was a terrible video and it's not up there anymore <laughs> so I started collecting houseplants around 2019 ish and like many people also collected a lot in 2020 um, we all know why houseplant tours are some of my favorite videos to watch on YouTube. I love seeing people's collections as well as their growing conditions. And I find it can really help if you're trying to figure out where to put a certain plant or what might work for a certain plant. So today I am going to do that. I'm going to show you my entire collection as well as kind of where they're naturally placed and where they grow most of the time. Most of my houseplants are actually in the bedroom as well as the hallway, which is this area here. And I also have a, couple, a good, well, a good few plants downstairs as well. And so I'm, they're the three sections I'm gonna split this video into. So I'm going to split this video into three sections. So the bedroom, the hallway and downstairs. And I will leave time stamps for those sections of the video. If you get bored with one piece and you're looking to see something else then you can flick through, feel free. That being said, let's get into the video because I'm sure that it's going to be quite a long one. Starting from the top, here we have Hoya Memoria. This plant is just a non-stop grower for me. As you can see, the vines have gone absolutely insane. This window is a southeast facing skylight and it absolutely love the, loves this. Don't have any open flowers right now, but the same panuncles keep on flowering as well. Sorry about the lighting here. This is just where they are. Beside it here, I have Hoya Wayetii, which also has been going mad. Both of these Hoyas are going mad um, with the vines. This has also been flowering for me recently. And um, do we have any open? No, but we have a couple here and they will open soon. But yeah, both of these Hoyas absolutely love being here. I will never move them because they are so happy. Here on the side, we have Hoya David Kumingii. Now this plant has been nonstop flowering for me <laughs> recently as well. All of my Hoyas have been very happy, which I'm very happy about. And this has been flowering for a few months now and it just keeps on going. And yeah, I find this super easy to care for. Also want to know if there's any plants that you see as I go along that you want a care tips video on, just let me know in the comments. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Beside that here, we have Epipremnum aureum enjoy or Pothos enjoy as well as it's known. I love this, it's very cute. It's quite compact as a plant and stays quite bushy. I love the variegation. It had thrips quite recently, which was great. Um, but I think we're all in the clear now, which is why she's back to her usual spot. I think that this requires a good bit of light to keep up that variegation. Otherwise it does kind of end up with more green leaves. Here we have Tradescantia Nanook, which I also recently did a care tips video for which I will link if you're interested. Absolutely love this plant. It's getting really, really bushy, super pink and beautiful. Underneath that here is Serapegia woodii, 
but the spades cultivar so the leaves are a little bit different in their shape if you can see a little bit more um, angular and less round than the general Serapegia, which is over here. This is Serapegia linear subspecies Woodyi, and she trails all the way down there. Some of you who have been around for quite a while will know this used to be a lot more lush and beautiful and I had to cut it all back in the winter, which was absolutely heartbreaking, but I had a huge thrips outbreak and it just, it was just easier for me to deal with the foliage and just totally cut it back to the soil. And I wasn't sure if it was gonna survive that, but it had pretty healthy, big, thick tubers and it grew back, it's grown back and it's really, really, really healthy and happy, so. That's the current conditions for today. It's 74% humidity. I don't have my humidifier going right now because it's very, very wet outside and it's quite warm as well. Here we have Hoya rotundiflora. This plant I got from Casa Botanica. I, oh, how long ago was that? I don't know, like seven, eight months ago maybe. It's done absolutely nothing. I went through, definitely went through a period of trying to figure this out and I know I severely underwatered it for a while because the leaves were really, really wrinkly. And I also had two more leaves, which I've since lost. <gasps> There's a tiny little growth point there. Do you see that in the bottom? <gasps> Whoa. So we'll keep an eye on her. Hopefully that's a sign that I've got the care down and she's gonna show me some luscious new growth because of it. Beside that, I have my Rufitifora de decursiva. Um, no fenestrations yet. I got this as a small little plug plant and yeah, it's beautiful. The leaves are very, very thick and firm and I will be giving it something to climb onto once it reaches the edge of that pot and hopefully that will encourage the fenestrations and for it to be putting out a bit more mature leaves. Here we have my Begonia Luxuriens. I love this plant, but man, is this plant so picky. If I forget to water this for like 15 minutes, it will just crisp up <laughs> and it's lost quite a bit of leaves, but it does put out new growth uh, constantly. It also has about three different stalks here, which all popped up as babies, these two smaller ones and that one at the back there, but I just love the way it looks. Look at those serrated leaves. Oh, I just absolutely love it. But it is definitely the plant in my collection that I have to look at the most and worry about. If it's even got a slight droop on it, I'm like, oh my God, quick water. <laughs> Here on the side then we have Hoya Bella. Now, this plant recently flowered for me. The flowers have just fallen off, they're spent. Um, I think this plant was getting way too much light recently. And I also overwatered it twice, so it's had a bit of a tough old ride, but um, I repotted it in a terracotta pot to kind of wick out some more water because in the plastic pot, it was just staying wet for a bit too long. And I didn't want to drastically change the substrate. <laughs> um, but it seems to be happier being in that new pot now. It's just the leaves are a little bit bleached from too much light, I think. So I might move that down a shelf and see how it does there. Beautiful, beautiful plant, has gorgeous blooms. I'll put up a picture of the blooms here. To the side here, just behind these ochre grow lights, let me just move these out of the way. I have my Epipremnum pinatum. So I actually just repotted this yesterday. So the leaves have not orientated themselves properly yet, but I am, I've given it a stick to climb up on because the leaves just weren't getting mature enough um, without something to climb on. And although I do love it trailing, which you can see down here, um, I want to see it mature as well. So I've done a bit of both. I've left some hanging down and some growing up and we'll see how it does with that. But I love this plant. It's quite easy to take care of, but it did take a long time to acclimate to my house, but it's okay. We have some aerial roots coming in here and I'm hoping those will attach on. 
One of my total pride and joys is my varicosum, philodendron varicosum. Oh, I wanted this plant for so long and waited so long to get it and it was so worth it. I love this plant so much. It's just absolutely gorgeous. We have a new leaf unfurling there and some little hairy stems. You can see it's climbing along. It hasn't attached fully yet, but it is putting out some aerial roots and we have some going on here that hopefully will attach so the leaves can get bigger. I really find this plant quite easy to take care of and it really thrives with minimal effort. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. It will run out of climbing space quite soon, but that's okay. Behind this, we have my Maranta Lucanura Bar Kirchoviana. I've had this plant for maybe a year and a half. Also got decimated by thrips last year in my outbreak. And I, again, cut this one back to the soil and it did exceptionally well with that and um, was much easier to take care of the thrips population that way and it all has regrown this summer and I just love it the leaves are very very thin so it does get affected by pests quite a lot and um, it might have a pest now because looking at this leaf <laughs> does not look good I'll keep an eye on that and um, might do a preliminary treatment just in case, but really, really beautiful plant. It's in the prayer plant family. I do have a general care tips video on prayer plants. If you want to watch that, I will link it. Also have a fan here for some good airflow. I put that on hmm, every couple of days and just, you know, just to help in moving the air around in here. Beside this then, we have my Marble Queen, my Epipremnum Aureum Marble Queen. And this plant took me a while to figure out. It just, well, honestly, it just needed way more light than I was giving it. And once I've given it more light, it just takes off. It's super easy to care for. The leaves flop when it gets thirsty. There's also another leaf here. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I can't wait for it to continue trailing and get longer and longer, but it really fills up the space. And it has really, really nice variegation, especially on the new leaves here. They're really, really pretty. Down here then we have Maranta Lucanora, the kind of general one, the red striped one. Also another plant that got decimated by thrips that I cut back, so it has much less foliage than it did kind of in two parts if you can see that that part there as well as this and um, but yeah it's quite easy to care for as long as you don't have any pests because I feel like um, with a, like a lot of prayer plants if you do have a pest it just rips through the plant like that before you even got a chance to control anything so here we have my Anthurium arisameoides um, love this have had quite a history with this <laughs> got this in a competition that i won on instagram which is the only competition i've ever won and was very very happy with it we had a very rocky start it either had a pest or it had an adverse reaction to what i treated the pest for as in very high soap content or something like that or maybe a higher alcohol concentration than I should have given it but um, as a spray and it just crumpled it totally crumpled but then it survived and um, it had no leaves then I put out this leaf which looks this leaf then this leaf which I was quite happy with and um, the lobes keep getting kind of stuck on the way out I've been spraying with water and that seems to have worked for this newest leaf which I'm quite pleased to see excited to see how big this is going to grow I absolutely love it I know that corrugated anthurium plants are quite difficult to take care of but I feel like I understand this one now and it's quite beautiful I do have it sitting on top of my Elecombe's humidifier because I do feel like the humidity helps the new leaves unfurl much easier without getting caught and I think it just prefers it. So yeah, that's her. 
Moving on here, we have my Stromanthi Sanguinea or Trio Star, whatever they call it. This is a tiny, tiny version of this plant. I really like it. I used to have a bigger version. It was one of the first plants I got, which has since died. That was one of the very first plants I ever tried to take care of. Pretty sure it got a huge pest issue and I wasn't aware of what pests even were and it just got decimated, but but yeah, it's really quite an easy plant to take care of as long as it has no pests, of course. Really, really nice purple ab axial of the leaves there. Just gorgeous, really, really nice pinky variegation. Down here then we have quite a sad looking peace lily. Um, honestly, you know, this is one of those plants that I just don't care enough about and therefore it always gets the least amount of care. <laughs> And yeah, it's it's been overwatered recently. That's why it's floppy. It is actually watered, but there's something wrong with the roots for sure. Not sure if I really care enough to keep it. It's not one of my favorite plants. Don't think it's particularly nice. I've just had it quite a long time and it has been doing much better than this, but it is what it is. Those are the sad plants that we have in our collection sometimes. <laughs> okay, I need to move this out of the way. This is my Anthurium clarinervium. This is the worst leaf. And these are the good leaves, which are of course facing away. Yeah, this plant was a learning curve for me. I think that it had some kind of bacterial or fungal infection because it had these little brown holes that then kept getting eaten away at. But I think that I've sorted that now through some treatment. And this is the newest leaf that it's had and it looks perfect, super healthy, no bacterial or fungal issues there. So I'm happy with that. This is another good leaf that's also facing up. Um, it was having, ugh. Anthurium are so annoying when this happens, but this is a leaf that got totally like stuck on the way out. And even though it started off as a small little hole, then it just kept getting bigger as it, the leaf got bigger. So I've kind of cut off some brown bits here, but it is what it is. That leaf is still providing some energy to the plant. So I'm going to leave it there and we have this leaf as well. So love this. I've loved this plant for a long time. It's really, really, really striking. Just gorgeous. And the final plant in this area is one of my newest plants. This is a Philodendron Gloriosum. Look at her, look at her, look at her, oh my god. <laughs> Another plant I've wanted for so long. If you follow Plant Life in the Tropics here on YouTube, Caitlin, she recently had a gloriosum week on her channel and released loads of merch. And then I was just like, you know what? I need a gloriosum. I always thought I did, but that week just sent me over the edge and I had to get it. I just absolutely love it. This is my first kind of crawler plant and I've recently repotted it into this kind of rectangular plant so that hopefully some aerial roots here will go into the soil on this side. I'm a little bit nervous though about how much extra soil there is and I'm worried about it getting root rot but I'm just going to keep an eye on it, see if it works. We have a new leaf unfurling here which I'm so excited to see. Not expecting a hu huge amount because it's gone through shipping. It's gone through acclimatizing to my house and all of that. So that's okay. But yeah, looks really, really pretty. Absolutely love it. It's quite chunky. But yeah, it's like your perfect heart-shaped, heart-shaped philodendron. So this is my giant peace lily. The window south east facing window is to this way so it really gets minimal minimal light this room although it has that skylight the rest of the room is quite dark so i can't really put my plants in much other areas other than beneath that skylight as you can see i kind of grouped them all together so this is one of the few plants that will survive in this area and it does put out new growth quite a lot leaves are much smaller but it's okay um, yeah, it's doing pretty well. It's definitely a bit more of a fussier plant in my opinion. When it gets dry, it really doesn't enjoy it. Sometimes I forget to water it, so it's all my own fault. And then you will get brown, browning tips on the leaves. Like this one is pretty bad. Um, but as long as you don't care about that, it's fine. It's luscious, big, huge plant, love it.
don't mind my skincare etc <laughs> but this is another plant that does okay in this kind of darker area not fantastic but it will tolerate um, this darker side of the room and this is an aglionema or a chinese evergreen i'm not sure what type it is but it kind of has an army type pattern um, i really really like it yeah um, these plants really don't like to be over watered in my opinion like definitely keep these on the drier side they'll be much happier with that so these are my snake plants so snake plants used to be known as sansevieria and now they are grouped under dracaena so this is my dracaena trifasciata moonshine this is the blue kind of leafed one absolutely love this this was two plants that i put into the same pot this is Dracaena Fernwood Mikado, kind of has a spiky um, growth, quite interesting. Um, this is Dracaena Trifasciata Laurentii Dwarf. So this is like the dwarf version of your standard snake plant. And they just live here and I just let them be. I just let them do whatever. The last plant I have in my bedroom is a good old trusty ZZ. Samicoca samifolia again really does okay with very low light conditions the only plant that would really survive here it has a lot of new growth recently it's very very dusty oh look you can see my leg hey and my cool socks with grumpy eyes on them so this is the hallway of the house it's quite a small space it's also where I film my YouTube videos and it's where I work every day. This is my desk, so it's right beside the plants. Um, yeah, it's full of plants. I mean, I literally couldn't fit any more in here if I tried. Well, actually I probably could, <laughs> which is sad. Let's start here, okay. I'm gonna try and go fairly fast because we have a lot to get through, as you can see. So I have a big bushy coleus plant here, indoor coleus, grew this from seed this year. Absolutely love. The kind of red ones are my favorite. This is definitely my favorite one that came out of that. That's a big bushy plant. Then we have my Monstera standaliana variegata. Um, beautiful, beautiful plant has really taken off for me this year. It's growing up a piece of wood here, you can see. It's actually fully attached here and as well as here, which is really cute. So look at her go. Absolutely love this. Behind then is my Mikens, who has recently undergone a massive haircut, attached it to, um, God, there's leaves everywhere. Attached it to a couple of poles here and the new growth does actually look better. Look at that, these three leaves look much better healthier and it's starting to stick on so I'm excited about that hasn't given it much space though so I'm probably gonna have to redo that next to it here I have my philodendron squamiferum one of my OG babies and I love these hairy stems so yeah recently had a big big chop it was much higher propagated it so I've recently put those cuttings in at the bottom and I'm hopefully gonna grow them up this piece of wood as well. We do have a little aerial root coming here, so I'm excited for that. Next to that, we have my big philodendron podatum, which used to be double the size. Again, chopped it all down in spring, as you saw in one of my propagation and chill videos. And this thing is already regrowing pretty fast. And look at that root, sticking on, really, really happy. It's attached onto that piece of wood now, so I'm excited for that. Let's see if that helps these leaves feel a bit more supported and then hopefully get some bigger leaves. Yay! Down here we have my Caladium Sweetheart. Absolutely obsessed with this plant. Love the veination, the colors, the green, the white, the pink, the dark pink, the light pink, all the pink. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Really, really love this plant. I'm so excited about my Caladium this year. I kind of dipped my toes into Caladium last spring with my Red Flash and quickly became quite obsessed. So I got a couple of bulbs this year. So I'm excited to see how they do. 
Here is one of my favorites. I'm gonna say this about so many plants today, but you know what, it's true. This is my Begonia Black Fang, and I just adore this plant. I love how gothic it is. I love the kind of a lime green in the center there. I love the way the new leaves emerge, really spiky. I find it really easy to care for. Just love the dark, dark colors in this, so cool. Here is my Begonia Rex Rondeau. Look at those leaves. This is from the lovely Jerry's Garden here on YouTube and Instagram. He gave me a leaf cutting of this earlier in the year and it's taken off. Like who knew? <laughs> Does anyone remember when I used to hate begonias? <laughs> now I absolutely love them. It took me so long to figure out how to care for these in all honesty. And um, you know what? It was one of those things where I felt like I was listening to other people's advice that didn't really suit me and my growing conditions. And once I kind of stopped listening to that, I was able to figure out quite quickly how to take care of them. So I absolutely love this. Look at those leaves. They're so cute. Yeah, really, really beautiful plant. The summer new growth is really, really defined. It's crazy looking. Looks like some poisonous Jurassic Park plant. <laughs> this is my little extremely thirsty air plant. Um, I'm actually not doing too bad with the air plants. This was my first air plant. I only have two. I'll show you the other one soon. And I was quite scared because I didn't know how to care for them. But you know what? It's not doing too bad. I definitely forget to water it sometimes, but it does have new growth. I will leave the name on the screen because I cannot remember right now, but I really love it. And I just keep it in this little blue pot with some stones in it. I think it's really cute. To the side here, we have my Ficus Elastica Taniki. So this is a big tree <laughs> and I love this plant. I think it's really, really cute. I know it's quite a common plant, but I really love it. I think the leaves are super cool looking. Like they look really unusual for a plant. They're just mad looking. This plant didn't really do much for me until I chopped off the top. And since then, it's just exploded in new growth and it's constantly growing. I do nothing to care for this plant, nothing. I water it, I don't know, maybe every month and a half when the leaves feel a bit soft. Other than that, I just leave it here. Never had any pest issues, nothing wrong with this. Love it. This is my Philodendron Nangar Tense. Um, this is a fairly recent buy for me. I got this from Casa Botanica and uh, yeah love it the leaves do have kind of a chlorotic situation going on this leaf was emerging in shipping and came out weird and not looking so great um, the leaves were chlorotic when i got them so i'm not really sure what that's about i have treated it for pests i haven't seen any signs of pests but yeah also you have to look at this look it has some variegation some spore variegation but do I cut it back down to that or not? I don't know. It doesn't show up on any of the other leaves. It had been propagated and now it's growing this big, huge caterpillar and kind of a second one down here. Um, so I'm excited to see what the new leaf looks like and how it's doing. Also down here, we have some little pups going on. We have one, two, three, four, one with a leaf emerging. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I'm just honestly with my new plants guys, I just give them some pretty good conditions and I just leave them alone. I do check for pests, but other than that, just leave them alone. Just let them acclimatize, let them get their bearings, figure out what the conditions are and then we'll, we'll address things later. <laughs> but yeah, um, wanted this plant for a long time. Love these gorgeous, gorgeous red and kind of hairy petioles. So my big plant shelf, let's start at the bottom here and make our way through. This is my Skindapsis Pictus Exotica. I've plant, had this plant for freaking ages now. Honestly, mine doesn't do a whole lot. It does grow, but I find it does grow pretty slowly. I've had it in higher light conditions, lower light conditions. It's kind of all been the same. Um, like it's healthy and all, and I only water it when the leaves curl in, which is very, um, not often and yeah it's really really cool plant and the leaves are quite thick 
but yeah, it doesn't grow super fast for me. Next to it here is a begonia snow cap, which is just a tiny, let me just take this out because there's a plant in the way. This is begonia snow cap. Um, grown this as a little cutting again from Jerry's garden. Thank you, Jerry. I love this. Love the big leaf shape and um, leaves are getting bigger. I'm excited. I'll be giving it something to kind of hold it up soon in case it flops over. This is a Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye, one of two that I have. This one is again from Jerry's Garden. Um, this one is super lush. I, it was flopping over. It has loads of leaves and two kind of main stalks, but it was flopping over. So I've recently tied it up. That's why the leaves haven't quite adjusted yet. Um, but this is really, really cool. Really, really cool. It's one of my husband's favorite plants because he thinks just looks absolutely crazy, which it does. Behind that then, I have my little Pilea Glauca. I did a care tips video on this plant that did really well. I think a lot of people struggle with this. Um, mine had a serious haircut in winter. It did not get on with my uh, increased heating in the house, honestly. Um, so I cut it back and now it's regrown this summer and it's happy again. So this plant just prefers the summer humidity and temperature, in my opinion. It's much more fussy in winter. If you want me to do a kind of updated care tips video for this to include winter growth, let me know because at the time of doing that video, I hadn't fully experienced the full winter with it yet. Um, so definitely need some tips on that because that was really where my downfall was with this plant. But it's recovered and it's doing well. It's really, really cute. Love it. In case you are interested, the conditions in this room right now, 85% humidity and 20.8 degrees Celsius. So that is a bit higher of humidity in this kind of open room. Let me turn down my spider farmer grow light because this is really throwing off the camera here. <laughs> And it's still throwing it off, so let me just turn it off altogether. Okay, whoa, that's much darker. You can probably see the colors here better though. This is a fairly recent plant that I got. Um, it's, quite, it's quite tall. It is a Strobilanthes diarianus. <laughs> Not sure how to pronounce that in all honesty, but it's very, very cool. It's purple, looks amazing. Um, yeah, it's cool. Behind that then I have a Aglionema red or I don't know what the full name of this is. That's what it was called when I got it and um, it's kind of like a pink Aglionema. It doesn't love me in all honesty. I think I overwater it a bit too much um, but you know it's fine. It's doing okay. I do think it's a cool plant. It does add some nice color to the green. Behind that I have a big Adansonii, one of many. I took a large amount of cuttings from this um, a couple of months ago and it's kind of all over the place. I feel like Adansonia just are like that. I don't have enough upward space to let this climb um, and that's my problem honestly. They just get spindly. They, they really really need something to climb up and for their aerial roots to stick on so I just can't give it that which is kind of sad. Maybe where we at, wherever we move next I can do that. I'd love to let it grow up a wall but other than that it just it just kind of does its own thing back here. That leaf is quite big though. All right so here we have my philodendron species affinity sagifolium which I recently did a video on all about this plant and all about the story of how I got it. So I will link that if you're interested, but yes, oh, this will forever be my pride and joy. I just love this plant. It has loads of leaves, it takes up a lot of space. I still, I moved it and I repotted it and I still need more space. But anyway, um, I did give it something to climb onto and without, I know there's sellotape on it now, but without me even putting that there, it found the stick and attached itself. It has quite a thick stem back there. It's doing really well. Um, since repotting it, this leaf is much longer than the rest, which I quite like and excited for. Under here then is my Hoya polynora. Now, although this plant is doing well and it's growing and it's fine, um, I feel like this plant may prefer to be in a plastic pot. I'm considering repotting it. I feel like it's just not thriving like my other Hoyas are. Now I don't give it as much light, but 
I don't think light is the issue. I think it dries out. I think the watering is just a bit too sporadic for it. I think it needs a bit more of a regular schedule for me that maybe I can't give it. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. Also known as fishtail hoya. Here then we have Alocasia zebrina. I got this as a little plug plant last year. And yeah, it has four leaves. And they're each getting bigger. This was the first, second, third, and this one just emerged. And I think this is really cool. Look at those stems. It looks nuts. Yeah, very cool plant. Moving on, we have Philodendron Brazil, which honestly, I didn't like this plant for really long. And I know it's quite common, but I just didn't pick one up because I didn't really love it. And now I love it. I don't know what that was about. I just didn't really like it. Look at that half moon. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That's back here. It's getting quite a bit of light here, so we're getting a lot more yellow. Um, but yeah, it's a cool plant. It's, I'm not, I'm just not one of those people that loves yellow house plants, I think. I probably would prefer the silver version of this, but it is still quite cool. Like the coloration, for instance, here on that leaf is very cool. Behind this then, I have a Caladium Sparkler. Let me show you that has only just emerged and this leaf does not look how it's meant to. It has a couple of pink spots there, but um, I'm holding out better hope for the next leaf. I'm not sure what that's about. It's just a Caladium tuber waking up and needs to kind of get its bearings a bit. Over here then we have my Monstera species Peru. Love this plant, would love to give it somewhere to grow up something, don't have the space, but really, really cool uh, corrugated leaves, very thick, doesn't like to be overwatered at all, hence yellow leaf there in the back, but that's okay. This plant took a long time to acclimate to my space, but once it did, it's happy, it's putting out new growth. This pink beauty here is my Caladium Fiesta. Love this, look how striking this is. I just love seeing this on the shelf. It's such a like boom color, absolutely gorgeous. Look at those green veins at the edges. And yeah, I'm excited for this to grow out more. It's only just, all of my Caladiums have only just really woken up. So let's wait for more leaves. Over here we have a Philodendron Hederaceum, which in all honesty I've just propagated so many times that it kind of looks a bit shitty. I don't know. <laughs> I don't love I don't love the way that that looks. Um, it's just a bit spindly and a bit everywhere, but that's my own fault for propagating it too much, I think. But it's doing fine. Yeah, very easy plan to take care of. Again, would love to grow this up something to have bigger leaves, but don't have the space. Moving on to the top shelf, we have Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. So that is the one on, with the variegation all along the edge here. And this kind of climb up, climbs up along here. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Here's an all pink leaf, an all white leaf. Um, it's quite happy and yeah. Very easy hoy to take care of. Never bloomed for me. None of my Hoya Carnosas have, but my other Hoyas have bloomed, so I don't really know why that is. But um, I think it looks really pretty here. Love the way it drapes and trails along. Here we have a Jade Pothos or Epipremnum aureum, uh, but not, you know, the typical variegated version. It's just green, but I love it. I love the way it looks. It kind of grows up along here and is growing through. Um, behind we have a ZZ Raven or Zamiococcus Zamifolia Raven, which took a long time to grow for me. It did nothing for nearly two years. And then this year it po popped out this and the one behind it. So I'm very happy that it's growing. I love it. I love black foliage. Absolutely love it. So I'm really happy that it's grown for me and um, hope it continues to. Here then we have my Caladium Red Flash. So I had this last year, I overwintered the bulb and now it's just regrowing. We have a couple of leaves here, it's just waking up. Behind we have a Golden Pothos Epipremnum Aureum, but the one with the variegation on it. Not a huge amount of it, but yeah, that's just growing in the back there. I have quite a few of those. Um, 
they're quite they're kind of like filler plants they're you know they're easy to care for they fill up a space and they give it a real jungle type vibe next to that then i have my philodendron tortum which i just love I love this plant. I think it's so weird looking. It really reminds me of, um, what's it called? That philodendron polypoides or whatever it is. Um, I'll put the name here, but yeah, gorgeous. Took a while to get settled for me. This plant really likes to stay dry in my opinion. It doesn't like overwatering. I've said that so many times about so many plants, but yeah, once I kept it on the dry side, it has thrived for me and it will need a new piece of wood soon so yep this one here is a fairly new purchase this is a hoya croniana silver really really silvery leaves this is my first kind of silvery hoya and oh i just love it it's already grown like loads of new leaves since it's been here it's only been here about two weeks but it's grown all of those i don't know what that's about um but very happy about it would love for this to bloom for me. I don't have the regular Croniana, so yeah, just gorgeous. Really, really love that. And I love the way it kind of drapes over the side there. So this is my second air plant, this Tillandsia um, or Spanish moss. This one is also known as, um, what's it called? Osneoides. And yeah, it's doing well. I love the way it just kind of hangs off the side here. Really, really cool looking. Um, haven't found it that hard to care for, honestly. I dunk it in water once a week, same as my other air plant, and it does pretty well. And it feels really nice, <laughs> as you can see, because I can't stop playing with it. And here we have my Rapidophora tetrasperma, which hilariously has seen much better days. And straight after I made the care tips video, it uh, got thrips again. <laughs> Just again, it's had thrips maybe three times and then I also chopped it up because I was worried about losing it. Um, I have since now put all of those cut rooted cuttings into the bottom here. All of those are um, new propagation, so I'm hoping that will bring a bit more life into this plant because it looks fairly right now. In all honesty, I feel like this plant just does better when you ignore it. I would love to let this thing just crawl up the walls, but I can't in this house, so we're just gonna have to deal with it like it is. You can see it's had quite a bit of damage recently, which... They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Let's hope for the best. Anyway, as you probably know, if you watched the Care Tips video, it's just up and down with this girl. She's thriving, then she gets a pest, then I knock her down, then I chop her up and she doesn't like it. Um, just back and forth, but it's still going, it's still going. All right, so underneath this, I have my Spider Farmer Grow Light, which you've seen in other videos, my setup and unboxing video, and my one month update. Now, I will be making a, um, let me just turn this on. <laughs> I will be making um, a video all about my indoor seed starting setup. So I'm not gonna go through my seeds here, but just a couple of house plants that I have here. I have another coleus that is red, which you've seen before in the one month update. I have my Serapegia woodii linearis variegata here, which I'm trying to make much more pink. It is blooming right now as well. Beside that, I have a Kalanchoe tomentosa, an Avenina papracea, lithop seedlings and cactus seedlings there. So, yep. There's still love in the grow light and I will update you with that in another Spider Farmer video coming soon. All right, so directly behind that, this is very squish for space. I have two Monstera Deliciosa. Now this one is new. My sister is moving country and I just couldn't pass this up because it has midrib fenestrations. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where I can put it. It's there for now. Um, but it can't stay there <laughs> because it definitely doesn't have enough light. Um, but yeah, this is the newest leaf. And it's gorgeous. And I know it's also a true deliciosa because of these rufflings at the top of the petiole. And my other one doesn't have that. My other one is right here. So not as doing so great. Doesn't have the ruffles there on the petiole. Um, 
it's just a smaller one, you know, but it's not getting super mature. It does live under this grow light and I do have fa various fans in this room as well. So moving back along, we have my philodendron silver sword, which I've recently repopulated with tons of cuttings at the bottom here, hoping they all grow into quite bushy growth up this piece of wood that I have there. So yeah, I this was a mature plant that was quite tall but wobbly and I chopped it all down. I have slight regret because I love the mature leaves. There's one of them left here and I um, feel like they're just, the immature leaves are just kind of a bit more underwhelming. Still, I love the silver. It's absolutely gorgeous and I'm hoping well, I'm sure it will get the mature leaves back again. Beside that then, I have a Monster Avinsonia, another one, which I've just put in Lekka yesterday. So I wanted to convert one of my Avinsonias to Lekka and see how it does because Avinsonias are just annoying about being overwatered and I feel like they yellow really easily if you forget about them. Um, so I'm testing one out in Lekka and we'll see how it does. Um, these are like a million different cuttings, so once they start growing out a bit, I'll hopefully find something for them to climb up, if I have the space. Here I have my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess, I believe, with the variegation in the middle. This was my first Hoya that I got. It's never bloomed for me, but it's really quite beautiful. I love this pink here. You can tell I moved it to a higher light situation to here. And uh, yeah, it's happy, it's growing. <laughs> it grows, it just doesn't bloom. Here I have another Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye that I actually have testing out in Lekka. It did not like that transition. <laughs> um, it lost um, a lot of its lower leaves, let me show you. So it's kind of just a stick now. I'm just seeing how it goes. I really don't mind that much if this doesn't make it. I'm just kind of testing out to see if uh, this begonia does well in Lekka. For any of you that don't know, I'm very new to Lekka. I have a couple of experiments going on and testing things out, but I'm really a total newbie at it. So I'm sure I'm gonna be learning and making loads of mistakes that I hopefully won't make again. Just quickly down here, I have Podatum, Squamiferum Podatum cuttings that I've just recently moved from water into soil that I will be using for trades or giving away. And just quickly over here then, I have also two Begonia Black Fang leaf cuttings, uh, Hoya Memoria cutting and Hoya Sunrise cuttings over there in these tiny little pots. Here we have two Begonia snow caps, one was a leaf um, cutting, this one, and then this was like a, a regular cutting. These are both in Lekka testing things out. Good bit of yellowing going on. Not sure if that's adjusting or what. I'm trying to get used to this flushing thing. <laughs> any Lekka professionals in the audience, you can let me know what I'm doing wrong or any tips you have. They're just slightly chlorotic, the leaves, um, but they're rooted in there. They're good and firm now. And this is the newest leaf, which looks uh, much better. So maybe it will just sacrifice those other leaves to adjust. I don't know. Behind here, we have more Lekka experiments. We have a heart leaf philodendron. Philodendron micans, hardly philodendron, and then I have hoya cuttings in water here, um, which you've seen in my propagation and chill and propagation updates videos. Here I have my Syngonian neon, neon robusta. Um, yeah, Lekka. Trying this out in Lekka. It already has loads and loads of root growth, so it's really, really happy. It's already kind of established itself. Um, always had problems with syngoniums. Then I grew this in water. Again, plant life in the tropics. Um, her syngoniums thrive in water and in Lekka, so I decided to try that out. Syngoniums have never done well for me in soil. I've always had issues, so yeah. But let me show you the newest leaf, which is much larger and much more pink since moving to Lekka, so that's a pretty good sign to me. Excited about this one. Here we have just a regular Hoya Carnosa. It's a big girl, but I love her. Never boomed for me, but absolutely love this. Um, very, very thick, luscious leaves, and um, really not a bother to take care of at all. I just water when the leaves feel a bit soft. They're very turgid now, 
because it has been watered recently but yeah this is just a gorgeous gorgeous uh, common plant over here we have some Hoya croniana Eskimo silver cuttings Tradescantia nanook uh, Philodendron micans uh, Philodendron padatum and Adansonii and um, Philodendron micans in Lekka testing this out in Lekka I only put this in yesterday so it looks a bit mad it needs to kind of get its bearings a bit I kind of hate this pot but it's all I have um, as I said, I'm not a Lekka person, so I don't really have like Lekka tools lying around, um, but it is what it is. Excited to see how um, the Mikan's cuttings do in here. So over here, we have two sad, sad plants. This is a sad corner. We have an Alocasia stingray that is once again trying to battle spider mites. This has had spider mites twice before, got decimated, had to cut off all the leaves, then it regrew and now it has spider mites again. So yay. Um, so it's been treated, it's just hanging out here. I just don't want it with everything else in the shelf in case it spreads. And this is my Philodendron Black Cardinal. I believe that's what it is. May be wrong. Um, the other leaves had a be better shape to them, but it's lost all of those leaves because it got thrips. Um, and this new leaf is all banjaxed. Again, been treating it quite regularly and hoping that it will survive. So the last two plants are on the skylight. Again, southeast facing. All of these plants are focused towards this light. Um, as you can see, let me just show you. So that's where we are. They all get their lighting from this uh, window. So here we have a Nepenthes or monkey jar carnivorous plant. This is new. I don't have super high hopes that I'm going to successfully take care of it. This um, pitcher has decided to flap, which I don't think is a positive sign. But yeah, we're just gonna test it out. It's still adjusting. I just want to be able to take care of carnivorous plants so damn badly but yeah oh this is growing quite well actually <laughs> these are new pictures so maybe that's okay but then an old one here is dying off we'll see any care tips please leave below happy to hear them really really want to successfully take care of this plant and then finally over here we have my hoya linearis this is relatively new i've had it for a couple of months and got it as a mature plant. It grows really fast though. Um, all of this is new growth and these just continue to get longer and longer. Hasn't bloomed for me, but that's fine. Um, kept it in the nursery pot and it does quite well. So there's a couple of other plants in a different room that I'm just gonna come out here to show you. It's just easier. This is my Thematophyllum. Um, I've had this for ages. <laughs> it's also been cut back before. Um, this is its newest leaf and I love the way it looks. I have kind of held it up with a stick here, but it hasn't like wanted to grow up yet. And I have these generally on another southeast facing skylight. This is Hoya Australis Lisa. She's very big and bushy. Never bloomed for me either, but absolutely beautiful. And over here we have Hoya Sunrise, which is super, super sun stressed and continues blooming for me. If you can see that there, I can't make it focus, but yeah, love it. Love this plant. So we are downstairs and this is yet another Southeast facing window, which is also quite dirty and it is raining a lot outside. So let's get started. Over here we have basil for eating, just indoor herbs. Here we have a lipstick plant, which I actually only recently got from my sister. Again, I said my sister's moving, so I've taken this lipstick plant and the Monster Deliciosa from upstairs. So this has just gotten a new pot and is kind of acclimatizing to my space. I've never had a lipstick plant. I believe it's Ace. Ace Ace Calanthus, Ace Calanthus. Um, I'll leave it on the screen. Jesus, that's hard to say. So I hope that this gets on with me. I'd love to see it bloom one day, so we'll see about that. Over here we have a fern. 
cannot remember the name of this. It's a Patera something. I will find the name and put it on the screen, but I absolutely love this. I think it's very, very cool. The variegation and the growth pattern is amazing. Over here, we have my Blue Star Fern. Um, Plebodium something <laughs> I will put out on the screen. Um, yeah, beautiful plant. Had quite a bit of yellowing recently because I forgot to water it. But yeah, pretty cool looking plant and I love the blue. Getting onto the windowsill, we have some purple garlic that's drying out in a paper bag, just ignore that. Over here we have some Dracaena or snake plant cuttings that I rooted maybe a year and a half ago and they're doing pretty well now next up here we have some jade a jade ow, got pricked by cactus jade uh can't remember the name of this either not great on my cacti and succulents for names this is an echeveria absolutely gorgeous i love these i'd like to get more of these if i had better space and maybe another serious grow light like the spider farmer one here we have my burrow's tail and um, grew this from cuttings as well really really like this i love the way it's starting to hang down now i want it to be so full and hanging down and then i don't know the names of my cacti <laughs> so if anybody knows the name of these please let me know i would love to have the species name for these there's two different ones in here there's these furry ones, which may be the old man cacti. And then there's these ones. I uh, don't know what they are. You can see where I wasn't so good at caring for them, where it went skinny with the light. And now since moving them to the windowsill about two years ago, they're really happy. Um, really, really low maintenance. Everything on this windowsill is low maintenance compared to upstairs. A lot of the plants downstairs I'm very hands off with. This is another one I don't know the name of. If you know, let me know. But it's cool, it's getting a little kind of a bubble on the top there. This is an Epipremnum aureum, a variegated pothos. Getting a little bit of leaf burn here at the window, but this was a cutting from my grandmother's plant. Honestly, it gets too high light here. It's a little bit fried, but it is what it is. Here we have some type of aloe like a tiger aloe maybe and it's very very cool i got some root rot earlier in the year and the main part of this broke off but i've since rooted it in water so i'm going to plant that up and then we'll be back to the former glory and then this i believe is a type of puntia and it has some cool pink spikes coming these plants stay here all year long and um, the cacti and succulents go kind of dormant because I don't keep them under a grow light or anything downstairs. I just let them be. So they do go in, into a dormant stage when our light levels are quite low. In Ireland, we could be, it could be sunrise around 8.30 and start getting dark around 4 p.m. So the light levels are way, way lower. So um, they definitely go through a dormant period. Maybe that will change now that I have the spider farmer grow light. Maybe I'll move some of these upstairs for winter and see how they do. I'm not sure yet, but yeah, I think they all look cute here on this little windowsill. Okay, so another southeast facing window. <laughs> here we have my Schefflera arboricola. This plant is non-stop growing for me. It's really highly variegated. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the look of this little tree and it's gorgeous. Here I have my Euphorbia trigona. This <laughs> I got in a haul actually on my channel last year at some, some point and it got spider mites and then lost all of the lower leaves off everything, which I was quite sad about, but I was pretty hopeful with it. Since spring this year, this is all new growth and new leaves are coming, as you can see. So I'm really happy about that. I think it looks way better with leaves, so that's nice. And here we just have one of your regular anthuriums. This is anthurium purple, I believe. It has purple little inflorescences. Um, this plant does really well here. It's very happy. It's always growing new flowers. Very pretty. 
So this is the final section of plants, can you believe it? This is a west-northwest facing window. So that's the light that these are living under. This is a Aglionema. I believe it may be a silver bay. Let me just move this pan. It may be a silver bay, I'm not 100% sure, but it's pretty, uh, very low maintenance plant. Another Chinese evergreen. This palm, I cannot remember the name of this, um, but this is gorgeous, very, very lush. It's actually my mother's plant, but I kind of have adopted it, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really, really beautiful, very low maintenance as well. I will try to find the name of this for you. Up here then we have a Kalankoe of some kind, um, which has beautiful red flowers. And this is always flowering for me, non-stop. You can see the blooms die off and just start again. And it just goes like that. Its growth pattern is really, really crazy. Um, these two, I have another one here I'll talk about. Um, I've just repotted and they, they needed to be repotted for like the last year and a half. They were so root band. They were so underwatered constantly because they were so root band. So I've recently given them new pots, so I'm hoping that will help them along, but it has made the growth pattern a little bit nuts. Here we have some golden pothos, epipremnum aureum cuttings in water, just kind of hanging down here. Not sure what I'm going to do with these, um, but they're pretty. This is another one of those uh, Kalankoes, but this one has pink blooms. So, so gorgeous. Love, love, love. Um, this one grew even more nuts. I think it was like trying to find somewhere to put its roots down really, um, because these kind of grow roots, can you see? Um, but then it never found anywhere, so I feel bad for it. <laughs> Maybe I'll put these back into the pod, I'm not sure, but it should be a bit happier now. It just, it's kind of nuts looking. And this is, I believe my Thanksgiving cactus. I don't think it's a Christmas cactus. I can't remember, I'll look it up. It's one of those. And this has bloomed for me this year and we have some new growth, but it, this plant, like many, took a long time to adjust to my home, but I think it's quite cool. Uh, very low maintenance as well. Those are all of my houseplants in my collection currently. That took so long, my mouth is really dry, my wrist hurts from holding the camera equipment. But I hope that you enjoyed this. I tried to give a good overview of everything and not linger on one particular plant. But if there are some questions or care tips you want on any specific plant in my collection, then please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe and give this video a like. It really helps me out and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.